Hey, what's up folks? Welcome back to another Lair by Lair. In today's tutorial, we're gonna take a look at the Keyblade project and talk about how the pieces screw fit together. So let's take a look at the overhead. So when I was designing the Keyblade, I wanted to make it so that these pieces could screw fit together. I think this is a great way to make a long piece of tubing uh, that needs to be able to be broken down, or uh, if you have something that doesn't fit the tallness of your 3D printer, you can make it so the pieces uh, are separated and they screw fit together. So the way I made this is I used coils inside of Fusion 360 to design these male connector pieces that are at the top here. So they have a pretty thick uh, uh, coil that threads around uh, the male connector, and on the inside of the tubing is a another thread that mates with the male one. The cool thing about this is that they are symmetrical, so you can print as many of these pieces and just keep adding to it. So if you're making, again, something that's taller than your 3D printer, this might be a good method to do it. And for the Keyblade, it was a really nice way to get all these pieces to screw fit together. They don't have to be flush like this. They could also have uh, a bit of a curvature to it, like the coupler here. Also in the handle and other pieces too. Uh, so in today's tutorial, we're going to take a look at how to design this stuff and some things to look out for if you're making <laughs> if you're making a design that needs to have some surface here that needs to uh, needs to line up. So we're going to take a look at that. Let me unscrew those. <laughs> there we go. All right. So we'll jump into Fusion 360. And I have a demo here that I put together just to show you guys the cross section of uh, of the two pieces what they look like when they're connected. So if we zoom into the threads that mate, you'll see that there is a pretty large gap between them. And this is controlled uh, by user parameters, so it's really important to kind of set up a demo for yourself first and do a couple tests on your 3D printer using your slicers, uh, your slicing profile, so that you can see uh, what the best value might be for you. Um, so just to keep a note of that. Also share this file too, so you guys can print this out. It's parametrics, you can make it as short or as long as you need. I would make it pretty short uh, so that it prints in like a, a half hour instead of like an hour or so. So let's go ahead and, and take a look at designing some cylinders in uh, Fusion 360. All right, so the first thing that I'll do is create a new component and we'll just call this component one, why not? The next thing I'll do, I wanna set up my user parameters right away. So I'll open that up and then start creating my stuff. I need two diameters to work with, so I need an inner and an outer diameter. I'll just type in outer and make this 50. I'll make another one, call it inner. This is gonna be the inner diameter and I'll make that 40. I need some gap, right? Some tolerance, some, uh, some clearance. So I'll just type in gap and then I'll put in my magic number, which is 1.2 millimeters. Uh, I think the next thing is length. How long do you want your tube to be? Uh, let's say 100. And for now, I think that's all we need. We could always add more, remove them, or rename them later in the design. But for now, I just wanted to set them up. Okay, I have that new component selected, very important, before I start making anything. Um, the way I want to draw this is so that I can look at the pipe long ways. Um, so I'm going to start from the front, okay? And I want it to be centered based because that's always a good idea. And I'll use my circle tool and draw in the center here. So let's go ahead and type in outer for the outer diameter. Make another circle and call this one inner for the inner diameter. Okay, sweet, so I have my two circles. We can stop the sketch now, and now we can extrude this out. I'm gonna extrude both profiles out uh, and just type in length. That's gonna be the length of our tube. Hit enter, and there we go. The next thing I'm gonna do is I do want to make this hollow. So I'll bring back that sketch and then highlight the, uh, the inner diameter profile. And what I'll do is I'll revolve around to this end and then change the extent to object and then select the surface here. I want to. I don't want to cut all the way through the tube. I do want something to. I need to stop it somewhere around here. So I'll add an offset here of negative ten. That way I can kind of build that uh, male connector right here on this surface. So with that surface selected, I'll click the uh, sketch button, make another sketch. I'm gonna go ahead and project this line edge inside of this sketch. It might automatically do that if you have that set up in your preferences, but I don't. So I'm just gonna project that one line in there. Hit OK, and you can tell it's projected because it's purple there, and it has that little uh, icon. Next thing I'll do is um, I'll create another circle, and this one is going to be, oh, I completely forgot to add some user parameters. So while we're in the sketch window, let's go ahead and add those parameters. Uh, the one I forgot to add is called thread, and this is our thread size. So I'm going to make this 5 millimeters, and I'll hit OK. So what I'll do is I'll make that circle in the center here. And I'm going to do inner diameter. 
if I type it in our diameter, I need to subtract that thread size. So we'll do minus thread. And then I also need to subtract the gap. So I'll type in negative gap or minus gap. So now we have inner diameter minus thread minus gap. Let's hit enter. And that gives us 33.8. Awesome. Next thing I'll do is I'll grab that and extrude it out by a fixed number. This one's going to be 20 millimeters. We can change this up later, but for now it's going to be a fixed value, 20 millimeters. All right, so now we have our main kind of shape to create our, our tubing, All right? Now we got to make our coils. Let me go ahead and hide the sketch. To make our coils, I'm going to start with the bottom one here first. So with this bottom surface selected, I'll uh, pull up the coil feature and that'll automatically make that surface into our work plane so we can draw off of that. So I'll draw in the center, keeping it centered, and this is going to be the inner diameter. Just the inner diameter, we're not adding any negative values here, just, just inner diameter, hit okay. You notice that it's going the opposite direction. We can use this little air handler and move it that way, this opposite way, we want it to go this way. Next thing I wanna do is I make sure my type is set to revolution and pitch, okay? The diameter, if you look at it, it is set to 40. That's not right. It's supposed to be a user parameter. So it's supposed to be inner as the inner diameter. Okay, so I have that set. Revolutions, I'm going to leave it at 4 because I think that's a good number for this size of tubing. For the pitch, I'm actually going to put negative 3. And it's not working yet because we need to change the section size to thread. But the thing about the thread is that we actually need the radius of the thread, not the diameter of the thread. That's why I made it five. So I need to put uh, divided by two to make it half of that, to make it the radii. So that's thread divided by two, which is really 2.5 because we use that five millimeter uh, section size. So now we have 2.5 as their thing. And the next thing I need to do is to make the section position. I need to bring that to the inside and I need to change the section shape, which really should say shape. And I'm gonna make that an internal triangular shape. Awesome, so now we have that threading. It looks a lot like what we uh, have in our demo. Problem is that it is starting a little bit halfway at the bottom, because it's kind of the way that this shape works. So you can see that it's kind of protruding out through the bottom there. So we need to do, we need to change the operation from join to new body. This way we can move this body separately from the tubing, so I'll hit okay. Now I haven't moved it yet, so I'm just gonna leave it there. But if we look at our, our bodies folder, you can see we have two of them. All right, so I'll leave that alone, and I'm going to start on the next thread, the, the male connector thread right here. So I'm going to select this surface, bring up the coil tool, and start drawing out that circle. So this diameter is going to have um, a, a user parameter with the negative stuff. So let's put, this is the inner diameter minus the thread minus the gap, just like how we created the male uh, connector. Now we need to change and update our pitch to negative three. Actually, I'm, I was going the right way so we can get rid of that negative value and just make it a positive three. Next thing is to change the section uh, shape. I want that to be an external shape because it's a male connector and I need that position to be on the outside and then that section size is gonna be our thread divided by two. Again, we need to change operation from join to uh, new body. And I'll hit OK. Sweet. So now we have those two threads. Now here's a really important thing to note before I go any further. Let me hide this tube just to show you uh, the two coils. If you'll notice something, you see how the, this coil here at the bottom, this one starts where uh, starts and ends like right here on the, f on the right side. But if we rotate over this way, you'll see it's on the left side, the male connector. It's very important that they are in this uh, orientation so that they actually fit together when you print two of the same copies. So it's really important that one is 180 degrees facing the other way. So if you ever make a two sets of coils that need to connect together, make sure that they are in this right orientation. And we can test it later down in the design here in just a moment. So let me bring back that tubing. Now the next thing to do is to actually move these coils in a position where um, it makes sense, where they actually will fit. Because right now, you, you won't be able to print this properly without chopping that off. So let's go ahead and move these things. Next thing though, I want to be able to see through the tube. So I'll just go ahead and type in section, and I'll make a section al analysis by uh, selecting one of our origins. So I'll click uh, this floor plane here so I can get a cross section of it. Excellent. So now I have that, I can move my coils. I'll start off with the bottom coil. I'll select it 
and then and then I'll hit the M key for the for the move command. And then I'm going to do is I'm going to push it uh, on the Y axis this way, but I'm going to put a fixed number. I'm going to make it four millimeters. I think that didn't work. Four, six. No, it's working. Cool. Four millimeters. All right. So I hit Enter right there. Then what I'll do is I'll grab the other coil and also move that up by four millimeters. Right there, four millimeters on the Y axis. So there you go. So now I have that. I can hide the origins. And the next things I can do is merge these guys. So I can merge this to make one body. So I'll select that main tubing and then those two threads with the operation join. I'll hit OK. And now we have a merged unified body. Next thing you can do is if you wanted to 3D print this, you would totally print it on this with this blue uh, selected surface. That would touch the bed. You got to work with something here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to punch a hole through here and make it a little bit hollow. But I'll do it on this side here so that I can do an offset. So let's go ahead and get rid of the analysis for a second. With that selected, make a new sketch. Let's go ahead and project in this edge. And what I'll do is I'll create an offset on that projection. Uh, but I'll bring it in. And however thick you want this to be, I want this to be maybe four or three millimeters thick. And then I'll say OK. Then I'll grab that profile, turn on my section analysis. I'll start extruding, and then what I'll do is I'll make this parametric. So I'll change the extent uh, from distance, and then change it to object, select that. And now we can cut through that. So if ever our thing changes, it'll always update with it. So now we have this little bit of a flange here, this little bit of an overhang. So what we can do is we can figure out the distance between these two by selecting them with the Shift key, and then it says uh, 6.10. So I'll just go ahead and throw a chamfer that is that size, so 6.10. 10 is that, and that gives me a nice 45 degree angle. So when it's 3D printing, it'll totally print that out and catch itself and it has all this opening here. So it'll work really well. Awesome. It's all parametric, so we can change it up. One last thing I'll do is uh, to clean up these edges here. Uh, we, can, uh, we can just throw a chamfer on there. However, I can't just say thread, because if I do that, uh, Fusion doesn't like it too much. So what I'll do is I'll put thread minus 0.1, or maybe 0.2, or maybe 0.3. All right, so for that reason, it's not working. So I'm just going to type in the actual value, 2.49, and that seems to work. Even though thread, eh, maybe it'll work if you do something different. But hey, I have that 2.49 in there. And I'm just going to select these edges and, and uh, chamfer out these edges here so that they, uh, when they mate, they're a little bit smoother. And it would print a little bit better, too, I think. So they're not so sharp. So there we go. We have that piece. Excellent. So now if we want to test this out and see that it actually connects with itself, I'll go to the main root of the document, and then I will uh, uh, hit the Move key with the Move object uh, set to Components, and then I'll select that component. And now I'll, there's a little checkbox here. It says Create a Copy. That's what we want to do. And then I will drag this out. I'm just going to drag it that way as far as I can, and I'm going to use a joint to attach this to this uh, piece here. So I'll do that with a joint, bring that up. Uh, I'll select this outer circle, uh, yeah, the outer edge and the outer edge on the top of the other one. That'll connect it. I want the type to be rigid. That's fine. No need to add any offsets in the alignment. Hit OK. Bring back this the cross section, and then you can see here our our threads meet perfectly nicely. In an ideal world, this would work really well. But I want to share with you guys uh, if you were to 3D print this, uh, let's see what that would look like. Let's see what some, some issues are when 3D printing that. So if you're doing a piece of tubing like this and there's no design on the outside and it's completely flush and it doesn't matter, there's no registration here, that's fine, it doesn't matter because when you tighten this, you can see that it goes beyond a little bit than what was uh, designed because, well, we have some tolerance there so you can always add a little bit of grip to it. The problem is, what if you have a design that has something like this? This was... Oh boy, this is, so it would work well like this but there's nothing on it, but what I have here is some little design elements on the outside, and the, and the idea is to line this up so that it matches perfectly. Problem is though, if you go a little bit too far, you will go uh, beyond uh, the registration here, and this no longer lines up. So what I had to do was to add a little bit of tolerance between those two coils to make this. So this one, uh, once you once you tighten it, the more you tighten it, the more it gets aligned. Now it's really locked in there. 
you can see that it's nice and seamless now. Well, there's still a little gap here, obviously you can see, but if you have something where the design really needs to mate, or really needs to match up and, 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 and line up with the, the other stuff in the design, you definitely need to consider uh, the tolerances between your coils. So let me look at Fusion 360 and show you guys uh, how to achieve uh, perfect alignment, or at least semi close to perfect. All right, so I have another piece here, uh, another demo here where it has that. If we take a look at the outside, there are the little design elements. So if we take a look here in the top, I'll do a cross section and show you guys how the threads are, how the threads differ. Excuse me. So if we look here, you can see that there, it gets really tight at the top here, and then it's more loose uh, at the bottom here in this, in this area that I have highlighted. So that is all done through when you're moving the coils. So jumping back to our original example, if we wanted to do that same thing, all we have to do is to go into one of these. I would probably do it in the mail connector end. So that would be this guy here. So if we double click that, all we have to do is push this back by a, a value. Depending on your printer or whatnot, you may have to adjust it. For me, what I did is I added a 0.3 millimeter value. It's supposed to be negative, but it's going that way. When you're moving things, uh, sometimes Fusion doesn't remember how far you moved it. So as I double clicked on this feature in the timeline, it no longer remembers that I have pushed it four millimeters. Remember I pushed it four millimeters? Yeah, so what I'll do is I'll push this. I know it's the Y value, so I'll just type in uh, negative 0.3, and that should add it to where I want. So negative 0.3, hit enter. And then I can go in the front of the timeline, and I can see when it gets merged and when the copy gets applied. That is looking exactly like the shape in our demo. So you will want to play with that value. It's very important that you have it as a parametric value. Although the move command isn't really parametric, you could probably do it another way where you use an offset or a construction plane. I think that would be a better alternative. Just make sure that your coils are oriented in that 180 degrees uh, so that they actually mate with each other. Yeah, so that's pretty much it. Um, there is a lot of experimenting you can do with it. Please try out the, the thing on your 3D printer using your slicing settings. Try it out, print out the demo first and see how well they, they snap fit. Um, if you guys have any questions or any comments, please drop them in the comments section. Thank you guys so much for watching, and until the next one, remember to make a great day. My name is Noir Wes, and I'll see you guys next time.